I want everybody who's listening to take this with a grain of salt because it is just one series. It, it's one series at home when it was cold and less ideal hitting con- conditions, but they're about to go on a West Coast trip. And if this continues against the stack of teams that are out there, the Cubs are going to find themselves behind the eight ball really quick because let's face it, guys. Like they faced the Milwaukee team who is very much in the same position as the Cubs. It's a lot of unknown in that lineup. It's a lot of, I don't know what we're going to get. And they lost that series. They lost the series. And the guys that are going to play on this West Coast trip have stacked lineups. And run, run prevention is great and all. I love the defensive aspect of the game. But what upsets me is that they didn't pair the run prevention with the, the base stealing. They didn't run enough this weekend. They were they got their first stolen base today. Like that's that's not what this team is. And when hitting conditions are less than ideal, and it's clear that anything after four in this lineup is like, well, I don't know what we're getting. I mean, look at today. They ran Terenz out there. They ran um, uh, Madrigal out there. Belly looks lost. In the in this first three games, I mean, Mancini had what one hit over the week or over the weekend, if not two. But like, there there's just a and then you're giving up. And this is the other thing that like, I love what they get defensively out of the catcher spot. But it's going to be pretty clear that all year they're going to get next to no offense out of that spot. Mm-hmm. So eight. And nine are no matter what lineup you put together. And I sat on my phone during the game when the game was broke open and I put together lineups like, oh, what if you put this guy here? There is no way not to have eight and nine be just like throwaway at bats. Because realistically, with the way the lineup is, is right now, somebody from right field, if it's not like a Master Boney or, um, a, a, or at third with Madrigal and you're kicking like this is this is the problem that they have is there's two spots in this lineup and sometimes three when you're playing Hosmer at first and he refused to play Rios the same day that all of us looked at each other like uh why isn't Rios in the lineup there was a lot that like was lost in my opinion on this weekend before the Cubs even took the field like Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I I think we should be blessed that we won on Thursday. Like let's be <laughs> let's be honest here. Like Stroh worked out of some trouble. They got some timely hitting, but the Cubs didn't blow the doors off of the Brewers that day. It was one inning of the Brewers some somewhat throwing the ball around. Mistakes, yeah. And a few, you know, mental errors within the, the the guy, you know, going to second base with the ball and then I think that was uh I think Ian Happ was safe at second or something along those lines. Like they, they were, they gave them like five outs in that in, and the Cubs were still only able to put around. But we'll take four with this team, twice every day and twice on Sunday if we can get it. But there's just, I there's a growing frustration if this doesn't change. And mind you, it's three games. If there are guys like Christopher Morrell and. Matt Mervis down in AAA doing what they're doing and they're hitting, it becomes a problem because you look at this team and you go, what is, what's this year for? Is this, is this to be bad again and to trade some of the one-year contracts that they got? Or are we trying to win? Like what, what precedent are we stand, are we setting for the season here? And that's what was so frustrating about this weekend. I, we're going to go back and forth on the bullpen, I'm sure in this episode, but that, I think that eventually gets filled up. That gets figured out. The starters, for the most part, were pretty good this this week. Defensively, they were elite. But there's two things that they didn't do. They didn't have the timely hitting, and they put the lineups out there that kind of showed they weren't going to have timely hitting for most of the weekend. And they didn't run. Run. I'm. That's the one thing that upset me most about this, this weekend. Run. You, you had two guys on that mound, two righties, that are slow to the plate. And a, and a Victor Caratini who, he's okay. I mean, he's not a great – he doesn't have a great arm as a kid, but go. Go. And then these are the things that, like, it just – it irks me because it's the little things that, like, 
managerial wise that not make me question David Ross. I know that he's great at setting a a, a culture and 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 a winning attitude and things like he's he knows what winning looks like. But like there's little nuanced things when it's cold at Wrigley that he should know. You need to run more. You need to take more pitches. And I don't know if it's just falling on deaf ears for some of these guys that are within these like five on down, but it's got to change or the Cubs are going to find themselves really behind the eight ball because this West coast trip is no joke. It is, it is not that they could easily lose after this, this Cincinnati series, Texas is probably going to be a good team. The, the Mariners were in the playoffs. Then you go to the Dodgers, Oakland, meh, but then you play the Dodgers in San Diego again before you meet the Marlins, who Marlins have good pitching and they're in, in very much the same spot that you are. This month is brutal, so you got you have no time to figure it out with the lineup. You got to start plugging and playing or running more. Yeah, and and, and quickly, Tyler, before we, we hear your frustrations as well, to the comments here a little bit, uh, we see Scott from Iowa saying, uh, starting early, boys, end the Hosmer, Magical Mancini experiment, call it Morel, Nelly B, Slaughter. Um, Jeremiah saying it's already time to cut Hosmer and bring up Mervis. Talk about Mervis being on a plane to Cincinnati or even Morel should be on a plane to Cincinnati. I mean, the the frustrations are high, is I think what I'm trying to say here, is what we're seeing in our comments section as well. Juice, I think the one thing, because I'm with you, I want to see them run too, because I like when they run. They did a lot of it last year. It's hard to run when, collectively, minus the Swanson walk today, which was his first, and the four Ian Happ walks over the course of the weekend, three walks combined. The rest of no, the I, I get that. No, I'm just saying, and, and I think but that's Ian another be, issue too. Ian Happ should be running though. Oh, great! I think Ian should. <laughs> I mean, be that's yeah. And, but maybe is there part of it that Ross doesn't trust a guy like Bellinger being up behind him, where they can maybe do a hit and run. I, I, I don't know what's going through the head, but I, I agree with you, man. If, if this team can figure it out and start getting on baseboard, they agree. They do need to run, especially at Wrigley in April. 